Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 186, Computer Graphics with Adobe Illustrator um, for the spring semester of 2022. Um, today, we're going to work with type in Adobe Illustrator. I um, hope you can see on your screen, uh, they have um, two, one horizontal, one vertical, um, Recipes for one for grilled trout and another for strawberry lemonade. And we're going, they've already done the illustrations for us. They've already created, created some text for us, some we need to create on our own. But um, we're going to, there's a variety of things that we're going to be doing in here. Um, one of the things is, is to align to glyphs. That's over to the left. And what that means is that if you want to make sure that the type aligns perfectly with the size of these, um, the, the front arrow and the tail, then they have some align tools that allow us to do that. The strawberry lemonade is an area, um, area text. So if I click on here, you can see that it falls under the category of an entire box. So if I were to add text to this, it would automatically um, go to the next line, right? As opposed to when you typically, when you use text that automatically trails all the way across until you hit the return key. The next one here is if I select this one, these are individual, right? The one down here though, these two columns or a single group of text broken down into two columns. And when you use area text, that's one of the, the really nice features of Adobe Illustrator. It enables you to work with a single column that we have down below here, or a double column, or you can break it down into three columns or four, or as many columns as you wish. And if you change your mind, you can always go back to a single column or whatever works best for you. Okay, now is the audio quality still okay or no? It says low system resources. So one of the things that I need to do is I'm going to, and I don't know why, um, I'm gonna pause the recording for just a Okay, so um, a couple of the other things. You can see, as I said, we're working with two call, uh, um, an area text, and we're working with two columns. Here we're working with area text, one column, but notice that we um, changed the settings from a simple rectangle to more of a kind of a trapezoid shape where it's irregular. You can do that because you can fill text in shapes. You can also apply text to um, outlines or paths, and that's what's done over here where it says good for you. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that. That is applied to a circle surrounding, you know, a little outline surrounding that. We can also take an image like the, um, the logo here. Um, let's go back over. Yeah, it's still a little bit sluggish. And if I select the logo, you'll notice that there's a little halo around it. And what that enables us to do, if it's on top of the text, is that we can move this about and try to move this down. And notice that the text floats around it. Okay, notice that the text moves around it. That's a really nice feature. Okay, so you can add in block of text an image and rather than have to hand set that, which is what they have to do back in the day um, to get that to flow around the text, it will do that automatically now. And then the last thing that we have here, um, let me deselect, come on. is where it says rainbow trout. Notice that it falls in a little arc. 
in the finished version here. Well, what that is, is that we can have it actually, we can distort it and you can, there's a couple of different ways that we can distort that. And it remains editable when you do that, which is nice, a nice feature. You can change the font, you can change the color, and you can change the properties of that distortion. Okay. So those are all the things that we can do. Now, since I'm still having troubles with um, the, um, the internet today, for some reason, it was working beautifully this afternoon or this morning, um, I'm going to switch and let's go ahead and yeah, it says low system resources. So rather than do the lesson today, um, I'm going to, instead, I'm going to go to just a, an untitled page and I'm going to try to um, cover all of those features for you, to show you where type is, um, what, you know, type tools are, um, what you'll need to do the lesson, and then I will cover it again um, on Tuesday when hopefully um, I get all of my internet um, problems work out. So you'll notice that I have top here. There's the pen tool. I'll go ahead and I'll close that. But we will need it for the lesson um, on Tuesday. Come on. Really sluggish. But down below that, or if, if you click and you hold down on the type um, tool in the toolbar, um, you can pull it off and you get these settings. And I believe I tried to talk about that the other day. Um, norm, the, the default setting is the type is set horizontally. You can also set it to put inside a shape. You can have it follow a path, which is what we're doing in that um, little lesson. You can also set the type vertically. And you have the other settings that are just the same as what we had for horizontal. Um, vertically, it can fill a shape or it can follow a path vertically. So those are the, some of the, the basic settings. Then what we have as well is we can bring up a character panel and a paragraph panel. And when we select the type tool, we also have the type panel come on, the pro in the properties panel over here. Notice that it switches. So again, they have a lot of redundancy built into this. And if we're using the classic menu or desktop, we have along the top many of the same settings. So let's go over some, some of them along the top, which will be over to the right as well. We have for the type that we create. So let me go ahead and create some. I'm going to click type, I want it horizontal. And I don't want it to be 12, one point. I want it, let's set it a little bit bigger. Come on. Well, let me try over here then. There we go. As I move away, now it works. So let's click in here. And, oh, this is going to be very frustrating today. Um, Michelle, we may have continued to have problems today. So let me pick something pretty good size here. Oh, come on. Everything was working beautifully this morning in my morning class. You know, it doesn't help any of you. So. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Michelle, let's go ahead and do yours next week. I'm gonna go ahead and 48 point. Okay, so now I can go ahead and click here. Um, and click anywhere on the desktop, it doesn't matter, because this will be um, a separate object. Now what we can do with that is we can select the move tool 
And with that selected, we have notice the little box that's surrounding the greeting that automatically appears. And I can click and I can drag and increase the size of the type any way I wish. If I hold down the option key, it makes it bigger from the center, but it still distorts it. If I hold down the shift key, it locks in the percentage to or locks in the proportions. Now, when you're done, you might want to look at it and look at the size of the type and it's an odd size. It's 87.7 points. Um, that really doesn't work well. So what you want to do once that's been established, when you get it in the ballpark area of the size that you want, go back with the type tool, select again, there you go. Highlight it and then pick from under here and select the specific size. If you don't see the size here, these are generally some of the default sizes that are used with type. Then you can type in um, one that is more specific. For example, instead of 72 point, what if I want 96? That's another one. Usually it's something that's divisible by 12. Okay, so we can change the size that way. If we have multiple lines of type, we can change the letting from here. We can change the kerning from here. I hope you guys remember the terms that we talked about last um, on Tuesday. And we can change over here, we can change the tracking. Now, this, the way that this is set up now, if I continue to type, and even though it goes off the page, it just will continue in a straight line until I hit the return key and it will go to another line. So now I can you know, create more type. That's working better. I can click here and highlight it. And instead of using the greeting, we can go ahead and I'll just sum type. Now this is one block of type. And again, if I select the the direct selection tool. See how it, well, it it's confined under this single box here. Now this, if I double click on this little box right here, okay, this changes it to area type. So now when I click in here and I type, it will automatically be constrained to that box. If I double click on this again, it goes back to um, point type. So, you know, um, we will cover that as well in the lesson. Um, in addition to that, um, as I said, for example, if we wanna change the lighting for this, if I go back to the type tool and I select the type, you have to select both lines or to affect what something you've already typed. And now I can go ahead and I can use the up or down arrows or I can go ahead and I can select, start with auto, but you can have negative letting. You can also have, um, you know, increase the size of it. Notice how much space is between it, the lines, but you know, I would like, normally I like to have things set a little bit tighter so I can reduce the size like so. And if I really want to set it tight, I can set it like 96 on 96, for example. So that would be set solid, like so. And that looks, with that size type, it's a little, it works a little bit better. When you're working with body copy, small text, you know, around 11, 12 point, then use the default letting. Um, that will probably work the best. And if I want, for example, where it says more type, be the same width as some type, then I can just select it like so. And I can use the tracking feature here. So let's go ahead and see how big this is. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add maybe 50. 
it's a good starting place. Notice how it, it stretched it out. It didn't change the size, but it changed the spacing between the letters uniformly. So if, the computer, if my computer was working a little bit better, or we would play with it, but you get the idea from that, okay? So that can be, it can fit in any number of ways. Now, if you want a block of text, so let me take this, or you want an area text that you're gonna bring in from someplace else. Let me move this over here. What we can do is we can start with a text tool and I can click and drag to create an area of text that I want my text to fill. Now that's obviously for a block of text much too large, but I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 12 point. There we go. And now what we can do is we can import text into it. So if you have created text anywhere, um, it could be Word, it could be Pages, it could be any other program, you can import that text. So now I'm gonna go, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go to file. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say place. And I'm gonna find the text inside our lesson. And hopefully it's a big block of text. Let's go on lesson nine. And I want the column text. Let's work with that. Well, let's try this on this text here and see how much that is. I can't remember which one it is. And select place and see how much it fills it out. So um, we have Mac base three. Okay, I'm just gonna leave these default settings and see what it does. And now it, it comes in like so. Well, I can click want it to be inside here. And now notice how it fills it, that block of text, which is pretty nice. But you'll notice that we have a problem. Now they want this to be a two column thing and that's okay. But also notice that based on the type size that we've used, that some of that there's text that is not, um, being uh, it isn't it's hidden because of the size of the box so we either need to increase the size of the box or we need to um change the type size and you can tell that it's very small but when you're working in it you'll see there's a little red box in the lower right hand corner so we have a couple of options i can go ahead and i can either change the size of the text work it fit or I can click on that little button right here. And then what it will do is it will, uh, come on, click on it here. Let me zoom in a little bit. See if I can't find that. Well, let me go ahead and select from here then. My direct selection tool. There we go. And I'll click here. And notice that the icon changes a little bit. And when I click, there's a little rubber band that fits from one text box to another. And it fills out the rest of that type. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. And let's follow that a different, a different path for that. So this was supposed to be two columns and it will be in, you know, in, the, in the lesson. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. And to change that, what you do is you make sure that the text box is highlighted and we go to um, type, type menu up here. And what we want to do is we want to area type options. So when I click that, a little dialog box will pop up. 
And we have here under the columns, by default, it's set to one. As soon as I set two, notice that we that it changes to a set to two columns. Pretty cool. So now what I can do is I can resize some of this and um, at the same time, maybe change the size of the type. So I have 12 point, but maybe that's too big. I can also, as I said, change, if you have the space in your design, you can change the size of the, um, uh, the box. But let's say, for example, what I need to do is I need to, um, all of the pipe fits. So let me go ahead head here. And I'm going to select, um, this is so frustrating. I didn't want to do that. Let me deselect. It's not allowing me to deselect. Come on. Let's select again. And now what I can do, okay. Um, let's say I want it to be a little bit shorter. So I wanna make sure that the directions are on one side and um, the ingredients are on the other side. So if I do that, now I can come back here and I can select all of it. I can say Command A to select all. I'll make sure I'm in the type tool. Up in here. Select all. And now what we can do is we can come back over here and we can resize the type. So this would be another way to um, adjust that. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to switch from that to maybe 10 point and see if that works for us. And then also make sure under the letting because it is relatively small. I wanna make sure that we use it auto settings and see if that, if that gets us anywhere. And if it doesn't, then what I need to do with the move tool is that I am gonna to have to accommodate for this. And I'm gonna to have to go ahead and, you know, create, yeah, a little bit bigger box here so that everything fits. And then if I need to, under directions, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the return key a couple of times to push it over to this side. So we have that area type. We have that others. So let's look with the type tool and look at the fonts that are available to us and the different um, panels and that sort of thing that we can bring up at our discretion. And I'm closing some of these now to show you where we can get them. So with the type tool selected, we should over here on the right have the properties panel for type. And at the top, it gives us the, uh, um, what font we want to use. If I click on the little arrow to the right, it should bring up a whole bunch of options for us. But because my computer is slow, um, it's not working so hot. There we go. And we can go ahead and we can specify different filters. I can click here. And if I only want sans serif type, I can select that. If I want serif type, I can select that. Okay. If I want slab serif, I can select that. If I want cursive, I can select that script, whatever you want to call it. Remember, here is the um, black letter that I talked about. We want um, monospaced. If we want decorative typefaces, we can select that. So for example, right now I have it selected so that it only sans serif typefaces are selected. The next thing is that we can select and see which over here, well, let's, we can highlight and um, have our favorites if we wish. Um, the, one, the one to the right with the little cloud though, and you can see that some of these are already checked. That means they've been downloaded 
from the um, from the cloud from Adobe. So if they uh, if you need to um, import type and you see the little cloud and it hasn't been checked, you need to check on it and it will download that font for you. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we see here, and I'm going to leave that up. Um, that is can also be brought up again if I go to um, the window and I go to character, or I go to type first, and then I go to character. Come on. Yeah, low system resources. And I don't know why that is. And I come down here to um, to type. And then I pop over here and I select character. That's where you'll find other um, panels that you can move around and use for type as well. Okie doke. Um, what else am I forgetting here? So I, we've added point text, we've added area text. Um, I showed you how to convert between um, point and area. Uh, what else do we have here? I've imported some text, which is pretty easy. You can also, if you don't want to use a box, um, you can import it directly uh, onto the page just by going to file import and that will take care of it for you. What else do we have? I think um, until I actually do the lesson with you, um, aside from aligning to glyphs, that's pretty much it in, in a nutshell. So I know that we're not going to the, uh, the three o'clock hour, but I'm gonna pause now. I'm gonna try very hard to help you, Michelle. And um, we'll see what we can do. If I, um, I'll go ahead and I'll stop the recording and hopefully that will free up some space on uh, you know, a process or allow some of my resources to be used so that we can have a better experience here. So um, I should have my internet fixed by next week and we'll be set to go again. Okay, unless there are any questions from any of you. So oh, I didn't, well, no, let me forget that. Let me go ahead and show you something real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and I told you that one of the things that we do is we can um, apply text to any shape we want around it or inside it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the ellipse tool. And I want it to be a black outline. It doesn't matter what color you use, but a black outline and no fill because all of this is going to go away anyway. I knew I would forget something here. So let's go ahead and move this over. And then what I want to do is I want to select this tool right here. And when I move over the circle, notice that the icon changes to a little I beam with a little swirly line through it. And when I click on there, it puts some Greeking in there, and you can change the size of the type. Um, you can change the font. You can do whatever you want. The same goes for if I undo that, and we select that we want to be filled. I can click here, and remember this can be any shape. So I'm sure that you've seen this, you know, in the in the shape of fish and other weird, weirdly shaped things. Now when I click inside here, oh come on, let's click on the path. There we go. Notice that the text fills the shape. And then what I can do, which is also kind of cool, it fills the shape. And I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit. What if I wanted to put another shape on top of it, uh, a logo or something, and I wanted the text to flow around it? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a plain old star shape, maybe. Let's see if that works for us. And 
and I'm going to fill it with black. So, and I'm going to come back over here. And with this shape selected, what I want to do is I want to go to object. Come on. Yeah. Object. And I can come down here and what I want is text wrap. So I want to make sure that this wraps, text wraps around it. And you'll notice that it has right now a default setting. If I can go back and I can, I can change the distance from that object. And now I can move this over that shape or that, that text. And notice how the text is flowing around it. Very cool. So you can create some pretty interesting things here with text. Um, no must, no fuss. If I want two columns inside that circle, I can. I can fill the circle. I can put text on the outside of the circle. Um, I can layer objects on top and have them flow around it. All very nice. So that was something else that I wanted to cover briefly before, which is done inside the lesson itself. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to say that's it for today. We'll give it a go again on Tuesday. I hope all of you come back. <laughs> it's a bit frustrating. What can I say? Um, but then I'm going to go ahead and Michelle, if you're game, let's go ahead and let's uh, work with you and see if we can't see if we can fix um, your mask assignment. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye. And I'm going to go ahead and um, um, cancel the uh, the recording, pause it, and then I will hopefully see all of you back on Tuesday. <laughs>